Hi, I'm talking with uh, do, um, our guest today, my conversation with Dr. Gio Espinoza, a uh, ho- uh, doctor who practices holistic urology and functional urology at New York University Langone Medical Center. Uh, he's also a professor in the medical school there. Um, today we're going to talk about, or for this particular uh, presentation, we're going to talk about what to eat and what not to eat when you've got prostate cancer. So Dr. Espinosa, please talk, tell us, what should we be eating? All right, well, thanks again, Daryl, for having me. Look, um, <laughs> so their diet, so you know how people are, are polar opposites as it relates to uh, politics, mm-hmm. right? Um, and there's a lot of controversy and there's, there's friction uh, whether you're one party or another, uh, same thing occurs with religions. Diets are very similar to that. Uh, vegan, vegan diet, no animals. And then if you consume a piece of meat in front of one a vegan, it's like, what are you doing? You're hurting animals. You know this is horrible for you. And 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 then there's the paleo, which is the you know the ancestral way of eating, where you eat you know animal foods and vegetables. And there's a ketogenic diet, right? Ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. And the reason why I'm emphasizing the ketogenic diet is because, you know, quite a few prostate cancer patients are on a ketogenic diet. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, bottom line is I don't think it's good uh, for prostate cancer anyway. Um, and so forth. So how much time do we have? <laughs> this, is, this could be a lengthy conversation. Well, we have people who want to save their lives. So, uh, yeah. you know, 30 minutes, hour, whatever it takes to right. uh, get some happiness and longevity back in there. So here's what, here's correct. So let, let, what I like to do is bring clarity into what they should do and takeaways so that they can apply it right away, right? Uh, that's important. Here's, here, here's a takeaway. And, and, I'll, and I'll refrain too much from getting too much into the weeds and in the, in the scientific um, um, uh, aspect of it, uh, though that's important. Essentially, the type of diet that once and, and I created a, a diet through the capitalist method, um, capitalist diet, if you will, capitalist is a, as an acronym, people can look that up, but it's a, it's a system specifically for, for prostate cancer, a lifestyle system. The dietary component is primarily things that include plants, so things with emphasis in crucifers, cruciferous vegetables, things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower, arugula, very important. You want those every day. And uh, so emphasis within those vegetables on spinach is fine, but needs to be organic. So when you go to the restaurant and they say, well, I'm eating healthy, let me have spinach, don't do that because it's not organic. Spinach is very high in pesticides, so we do want spinach to be organic. And it's not one of the top vegetables. The top vegetables for prostate cancer is cruci- crucifers, cruciferous vegetables. So that's that. Now they have cauliflower rice and cali- cauliflower crust. But, uh, you know, there's cauliflower everything going on right now. Um, so that's that. Um, in terms of animal products, right? So a lot of people ask, hey, can I have meat? Can I have chicken? Can, you know, what can I have? The number one type of animal product is fish with an emphasis in salmon. Salmon. Every sort of, every expert agrees that salmon because it's higher in omega-3 fatty acids. So you want more. So there's, there's these fatty acids, so all types of fatty acids. Omega threes are important, um, as opposed to omega six. So you want less omega six, more omega threes, and you want that balance of omega three to omega six. Omega six you find in vegetable oils and things like that. You want less of that, less fried foods, as an example. More omega three. So you find you look at that and you and 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 that's in um. You find that in 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 fish in in salmon. The trick is this, not overcook salmon in high temperature. If you overcook salmon in high temperature, then all bets are off. Now that salmon produces what's called HCA, hydrocyclic amines, and that's a carcinogen. 
This was published in a study in 2012 showing that salmon is the best fish, but if it's overcooked, it's not the best fish anymore. So when you and, say high temperature, if I may, uh, high yeah. temperature, I mean, like, yeah, above, what does that above actually mean? 350 degrees. Mm. So and, if for, I, and for a quick, like, so you slow cooking, poaching salmon, mm -hmm. baking salmon better, cooking in high temperature, fast cooking, not so good, particularly with a lot of charring on the outside. Okay? Yep. Salmon. This study from 2012 also looked at all fishes and it showed that white fish wasn't as protective, uh, like colored fish, that's what they call it. They're really referring to salmon. Um, and certainly temperature, the temperature you cook it in, it made a difference as well. So white fish cooked in high heat, really, really bad for you. Really not, particularly as it relates to prostate cancer, as opposed to slow cooking, poaching salmon, let's say. That's the takeaway. So a nice meal with cauliflower and broccoli and salmon is fantastic. Cooked the right way. Red meat, the research is neutral. With the exception of uh, processed meats, your cold cuts, hot dogs, sausages, they're not good. They're not good probably because they have nitrites and the processing and whatever. If you get good quality grass-fed meats, beef, that's better because it's better quality. The temperature and how you cook it matters there again. You don't want these hydrocyclic amines. Any animal product that you cook in high temperature can produce these hydrocyclic amines and that's not good. You want rosemary on your meats because rosemary actually have anti-cancer properties and rosemary eliminates a lot of these hydrocyclic amines and PCA, polycarbon, whatever. These are chemicals that are produced from high heat, uh, cooking animal products in high heat, which are carcinogens. So you don't want that. Takeaway, red meat, they're, they're not necessarily um, carcinogens unless they're cooked in high heat. So they're neutral. Are they protective? No, they're not. Salmon is probably protective. Um, red meat is not. But some people say, hey, I miss my steak. I'm going to the steakhouse, you know. So have it, don't have it with spinach, have it with broccoli, let's just say. So that's that, that's the meat story. Chicken, poultry, good, skinless. Skinless poultry is okay, skinless, okay? The number one animal product, once again, is salmon. So you want more of that. Moving on to like carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, pasta, flour, breads, cookies, cakes, those are procarcinogens. You don't want that. Uh, drinks uh, that are high, sodas, juices, fruit juices. Well, it's a fruit juice. Well, it's not a fruit. Apple juice is not an apple. So anything that's high glycemic, high sugar, you want to eliminate. You want low glycemic and you want whole foods whole grains. Fats, controversial, controversial fats with prostate cancer. Here's the takeaway, fats. You want healthier fats, like I said, omega-3 fats are good. You don't want trans fats, those are the fat found in fried foods. You don't want that, that's procarcinogen. You want moderate amount of saturated fat, not too much. Saturated fat from coconut oil, which you can actually cook in, so olive oil is great, except that olive oil, oil is not great to cook in, in high temperature, because then it changes its molecular structure and it's not healthy. Coconut oil you can cook in, and coconut oil is great. And it's, it is a saturated fat, but it's, it's a healthier saturated fat. So you want, it has lauric acid, which is actually good for your immune system, which is part of the big five that we're trying to address, like we spoke about when we talked about uh, supplements. So coconut oil is very good. So you wanna cook with coconut oil, you wanna uh, and not cook with olive oil, you do want olive oil in your vegetables and around your salads and so forth. Um, what else? One of the things that I think it's helpful, Daryl, 
it's not only what to eat, but when to eat. I think intermittent fasting and fasting is good. So 13, 14, 16 hours a day where you don't, you give your body a break. I think that's very helpful in terms of getting your body back in balance into an anti-carcinogenic state, if you will. So intermittent fasting is a really good thing. You lose weight. Um, you become less insulin sen uh, sensi uh, uh, desensitized. It's a really good thing. So, in so it's not only about what you eat, but it's about when you eat. You know, if you like, um, I have a capitalist food rating system, Daryl, that you can send, uh, give your audience. Um, and they so where I, this is where I rate foods in a scale of one to five. Um, sure, and we'll include that in the digital goodie bag thing yeah. and, uh, where we could link to it. We can yeah, actually let's, let, let, let's stop for a moment just before we lose the knowledge from before. Let's just, yeah. so skin, what is it about skin that's bad to eat? I don't know. That, that was just a study that was um, looked at and that showed that skinless chicken is good. Skin, uh, uh, skin, skinned chicken consumption bad okay. for prostate cancer. Skin I is have a, assumptions. Uh, um, yeah, the skin is more; it has fat, and there is a relationship with too much of bad fats in prostate cancer. Um, toxins are stored in fats. Both your toxins in your body and my body are stored in fats. And toxins in animals are stored in fats. So maybe we're consuming some of these toxins. That's just my theory and assumption. Um, but I, I don't know exactly why. Uh, is, other the than studies is, is the idea something around, uh, so uh, are we also not to eat organ meat? I mean, you can imagine. I, I mean, don't, I don't, that's, I don't know. They, they have, you know, I want to, I don't know. Okay. Nor do no, I know what I would guess. I go by what the research shows me. My goal is to implement, my goal is to interpret and implement the research so that people have takeaways and know what to do in the day to day. Organ meat? Wouldn't know. Okay. And I ask because skin is an organ. You know. the, yeah. I, the idea of uh, what about salmon skin? The skin of a salmon. Salmon as a whole seems fine. I don't think salmon skin has been looked at. And I don't know when I read the research. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think salmon skin is good. Okay. The idea of um, uh, the juices, which to my mind, I've now looked, I mean, I personally used to drink a lot of orange juice. Uh, as a 20-year-old, I probably help the coca-cola company expand because of my intake uh now i, I see that day or so yeah now i see those as poisons uh and not because they are poison they're not poison in the sense like you'll but in effect the idea of taking in massive amounts of sugar is now the idea of orange juice or apple juice, but let's say orange juice, because that's a common drink available on almost every breakfast table in the developed world. Yeah, yeah. It's also a delightful drink. Is but oranges are okay to eat. Uh, it's surely the idea that has to be beyond quantity. That the I mean. You know, if you just have one orange, it's not the same as drinking uh, eight ounces or 12 ounces of orange juice. What is it about our eating oranges that are and the fruit itself beyond quantity that uh, is fine and not the juice of the vegetable of the. It's the sugar it's, content. You know, how, you will never eat all the oranges required to make an eight ounce orange juice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, glass. Um, it's, it's a sugar content. It's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so then you take that and you pasture. So fresh squeezed orange juice, that's one thing, which is still very high in sugar. Then you pasteurize it and do all those things. It leaves you only with the sugar component of it. That's high glycemic that causes an insulin spike, which we're trying to, those are the, one of the five things that we're trying to address, right? 
right. inflammation, immunity, detoxification, insulin and blood sugar control, and and immunity. Um, it causes that spike. So if you are just drinking juices, thinking that is a lot better than soda, it, it is not. So the idea of when people were doing juicing in the United States. That's a whole States, different those story. Okay. Juicing is juicing fresh squeezed vegetables too. Mm -hmm. Not just, actually it's very little fruits. It's vegetables primarily. That's different. Juicing fresh squeezed vegetables, um, it's a much different, it's impacting your body biochemically than it is just orange juice. Mm -hmm. Now I would say this, because then the other component is pomegranate juice. Mm -hmm. Is in pomegranate juice too. So I would say this, Pomegranate juice, based on studies, it seems to have some benefit for prostate cancer. The problem is that an eight ounce glass uh, yields about 32 grams of sugar. That's a lot, right? So I would cut it less and I would dilute it. The other thing is, you and I are, I'm standing up, you're sitting down, not too active right now. You drink orange juice now, that has a different effect in your body. You go for a 30 minute run, then have orange juice. The, what happens to that orange juice in your body is a lot different after a run than sitting down. Why? Your muscles gobble it up. There's very little insulin production because of the exercise. So when you have the orange juice or the fruit juice matters a lot, as opposed to a sedentary lifestyle, which is why exercise is so important. Right. One of I the many, anyway. Uh, why mail care is uh, going to, uh, I hope around this time, December, uh, we'll be announcing our 30 Minutes to Live uh, program, which is- Oh, lovely. I look, I look forward to that. Yeah, it's being worked on as we speak. Uh, people probably could figure out we're recording this in advance of presenting it, uh, not by much, by a few weeks, maybe a month a or weeks. so. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, now uh, before we move on the idea of fasting or giving your body 13 hours of a break in the sense that i mean a break i mean isn't your body seeing that as a negative impact like i've i'm being confronted with no food shouldn't you know isn't the body on a cellular level panicking and saying uh i have to go into a protective mode and that's inciting all sorts of uh and somatic yeah. and and things that i don't know how to pronounce not at 13 hours or 14 hours certainly two days three days fast yet which people do mm -hmm. however that may be good too. We're not going to go there right now. The bottom line is this 12, 13 hours, 16 hours, a really good thing. Here's more. Those patient prostate cancer patients that are going to undergo radiation therapy for the last year and a half, I've had them fast for 16 hours, then go to their radiation and then eat after their radiation treatment. So why do I do that? It seems, and this is preclinical trial. So there's been no human, but in preclinical trials, it seems that the cancer cells are more sensitive to the radiation at, on a fasted state than um, after eating. So I have them all fast, do radiation, and then and then do and, and then eat afterwards. So that's what I've been doing. I've been, I've, and they've been doing extremely well, including not really having much side effects from the radiation, um, which is good too. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, let's continue. Uh, yeah. So fasting, no. So fasting. So we said what we said about fasting. That's the. It's really intermittent fasting. Twelve to sixteen hours a day is good. Um, you can have coffee if you have coffee, no milk or sugar, and you can have tea, no milk or sugar or water. No, no milk or sugar, of course, in water. In water. That's fasting. What else can I say about? You know, it, it's really. And, and, and I want to emphasize, Daryl, that food is medicine. Uh, again, it's weird. It, food is medicine. Good food is medicine. There's good food is information in your body. Good food is is information where now since your body produces different signals, like if you consume an orange juice, you got it. Your body's going to pr produce a lot of insulin, for example. So good food is medicine. Um, The crucifers, you know, plants, herbs, herbs and spices. These things have phytochemicals. They have plant chemicals that have anti-cancer properties. 
So herbs and spices, they're all good. Turmeric, uh, oregano, uh, rosemary, sage. You know, you and I have young kids. Well, I have young kids. You have a young kid. Mm -hmm. um, we do the pizza thing. Go to the pizza. So one of the things I do when I have a pizza, and by the way, I like pizza, so I don't want to make it sound like I'm a you know, hermit in the mountains just eating seeds all day. I like pizza. I enjoy a pizza, good pizza. We're, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I douse it with oregano. I douse it with cayenne pepper, right? These things have anti-cancer properties. Now, am I saying to myself, wow, I'm killing cancer cells? No, I like the flavor, but I'm trying to counteract any negatives from the pizza. Um, and the way you do that sometimes is with herbs and spices. So in a nutshell, nuts, by the way, are very good. <laughs> no pun intended. Nuts are excellent. Walnuts, almonds, uh, pumpkin seeds, they're very, very good uh, for prostate cancer as well. So you want a plant-based diet, nuts, seeds, um, olive oil, salmon, vegetables, emphasis in cruciferous vegetables, whole grains, be careful with rice, be careful with rice. Well, Dr. Gio, how about brown rice? Be careful with rice. Here's the story. Brown rice, typically because of the soil, is high in arsenic. Arsenic is a carcinogen for prostate cancer. So here you are, you're saying, well, I'm eating healthy. I'm eating my brown rice. And now you're increasing your arsenic levels. You go to the restaurant and you say, let me get brown rice, spinach, and fish. And you say, I'm eating healthy. Spinach, high in, um, a phyto, uh, in, in herbicides and pesticides, carcinogens. The salmon is farm-raised, very likely high in BPA, bisphenol A, because it's farm-raised. And the brown rice is high in arsenic. That's a carcinogenic meal, though you think it's healthy. What do we do with that, with that information? Actually, white rice is very low in arsenic because it's processed. However, white rice is high in starch and da, 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 right? High simple carbohydrate. So what do we do? Londonburg. Uh, brown rice, uh, Londonberg rice, L-U-N-D-B-E-R-G. That's a company. Again, I have no financial connection to that. They actually have their brown rice is very low in arsenic. They do a good job studying their brown rice and scientists have studied their brown rice. It's actually really low in arsenic. So that type of brown rice is good. You at a social, social setting and you're saying, man, what should I get, brown rice or white rice? If those are your two options, get white rice. Yes, high in starch, but if you're taking good supplements, exercising and doing other good things, it's not gonna do much. Plus you counter that with, I don't know, beans, uh, lower, which is good for you, very good actually. Beans are very good. Legumes in general are very good uh, for you for prostate cancer. And you have uh, you know vegetables and things like that, it's fine. Um, so that's what you do. Um, so eat legumes eat nuts and seeds, eat cruciferous vegetables, salmon, um, chicken without the skin is best. Look, I like my skin and my chicken, of course, is, is juicy, um, but I don't do it often. Don't, you know, do it once every couple of weeks at, at most. Um, um, olive oil, like I said, and, um, and nuts and seeds, fruits, particularly high, uh, low glycemic fruits, apples, berries are the best. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And which with, with regards to drink, coffee is fine. Black is best. Organic coffee is best. Uh, green tea is the best type of tea. Yeah. Chamomile tea is good. Ginger tea is great. Um, and, and green tea, um, and, um, and water, water and fresh squeezed juices. How about alcohol, Daryl? What do we do with alcohol? No we, drink? We drink it and enjoy it because we have prostate cancer we want to forget. <laughs> right. let's, let's talk about Guinness and beers and wines. What, Guinness? Uh, yeah. Guin why Guinness? Well, that's why what I drink. Guinness? Why, why did you say Guinness? I'm just curious. 
Uh, it's so a yeah, dark beer clearly, that I clearly, drink. Yeah. Yeah. That's the vibe. So, I, so now that I know that's what you drink, I, I won't say any anything negative about no, You no, know, no. I did go to the yeah. Guinness place in uh, St. James in Dublin. Yeah. And it was a great experience. They have the old pictures and advertising from the old days of you drink Guinness and you can lift heavy things and the guy lifting heavy things with, you know, big muscles drinking Guinness and all, all that. All right. Um, you know, actually studies w- as it relates to, I want to be very careful to talk about alcohol. And the reason why is because alcoholism is real. And there are people that are listening that are alcoholics or, you know, or recovered alcoholics. Okay. Alcoholism is real. The quality of life for you and your family is no good. You're giving everybody a hard time if you're an alcoholic and or you don't want to be go back to alcohol if you were, are an ex-alcoholic. And, you know, it, as a whole, it's not good for you as a whole. How about a drink a day? Fine. A glass of red wine a day? Fine. But too much alcohol and you know who you are, that's, it's not good for you. Actually, it's with prostate cancer. I'm looking at all the research. There's not a strong connection there between alcohol consumption of any kind and prostate cancer. I've looked at it lately because I am working on my next um, prostate cancer book. And I'm like, my God, the research is not that bad for alcohol, alcohol consumption. Okay, but it is bad for other cancers. It is bad for you know, other conditions. So we don't want to undermine that um, you don't want to not die from anything. Here's the takeaway. Red wine is good. If you have a spirit here and there, no problem. And just like a beer here and there is no problem. There's hops in beer, a lot of carbohydrates in beer. We know that alcohol does contribute to weight gain and high BMI and obesity. Obesity and overweight contributes to prostate cancer. So be moderate. Red wine, if there's an alcohol problem, address it. And if you're a recovering alcoholic, don't go back to alcohol. There's no benefit there. Okay. Well, you've covered an awful, very good, um, inspiring me to uh, hit the vegetable counter. Inspiring, not depressing, right? No, because there's nothing depressing about knowing what to do to make your life happier, you know? I I agree. Yeah. I mean... You know, I could live with, uh, we could all live with less sugar, but we can't live if we're dead, you know, so, uh, or impaired. Um, You've given us a lot, and I thank you for that. And uh, we'll talk again in yet another presentation. Uh, Okay. Thank you, Dr. Espinosa. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye.